All right, we're going to get started. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to the Citation Tools webinar. Um, my name is Martha Roseberry. I'm one of the science and engineering research librarians here at Cavill Library. And I'm Marilyn Scott, the education research librarian here at Cavill. Um, just a few housekeeping things before we get started. Um, Marilyn and I are testing out new webinar software for VCU libraries. Um, so we think we've got everything down, but please um, put in the chat if something is displaying incorrectly and we'll do what we can. Um, we've also done um, everything we think to make sure that all the text is readable and large enough for everyone. Um, but again, um, if you let us know in the chat, we'll make any adjustments if you're having a hard time seeing. Um, we will be switching back and forth between applications quite a bit, so we understand that could be an issue. Um, and of course, please ask questions in the chat. We'll be doing our best to monitor it as we go, um, but we will also have a period for questions at the end. Um, and then the last thing to mention is that um, we have a citation tools research guide as well. Um, this includes information on Mendeley and Zotero, the two tools we'll be talking about today, as well as EndNote, and we're going to add um, more information to this guide as we go. Um, you'll also find contact information for Marilyn um, and myself, um, if you would like to contact us directly at any point. Um, and we're going to provide the URL for this guide um, at the end of the webinar, and um, you'll also get an email with more details. So don't worry, we'll make it easy for you to find this information. Um, now I'm going to turn it over to Marilyn to start us off with Zotero. Well, as you saw on the slide, Citation Tools is the title of our webinar as well as of our guide. But these tools that we're going to be talking about do a lot more than just produce citations in various styles like APA, MLA, ACS, etc. They're really better called source management tools because they not only allow you to accumulate your sources in one place, but they also allow you to organize those sources in any fashion you choose and to add notes and comments. Today we'll be looking at Zotero and Mendeley and our purpose is to provide you with information so that you can choose the tool that will work best for you, download and install your selected tool and add resources to your management tool. They both help you manage your research by assisting you in organizing your sources. Which one is better for you depends generally on the formats of your sources, how you interact with those sources, and how you find sources. So let's consider why you might choose Zotero. Can people hear us? So this is a populated account uh, already set up for Zotero. I might mention that Zotero is free unless you exceed the attachment limit, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, and it is also open source. The first thing that I want to point out is the variety of formats that are listed here. This particular account has things organized by format, and you can see there are articles, books, DVDs, even live performances, miscellaneous websites, etc. A vocabulary note as we look at this, all of your sources reside in my library and then you organize them into collections or sub-collections. To add a collection, you simply uh, click on New Collection, give it a name, and it will appear as a collection. You can add a sub-collection simply by highlighting an existing collection, right-clicking, and add a new collection with a name. Collections operate the same way as folders or subfolders. Um, the diff one big difference between this and Word, and it's our not Word, but uh, your regular computer and folders, is that in this situation, you can have things in more than one place. So, for example, 
this particular one and I'll roll up here a little teeny bit and we'll just, uh, I'm on a Mac, so I'm gonna click option and it shows me that this is in uh, attribution. It also, we can't see it on here, but it was also showing me that it was in webinar notes. So it just shows me that it can be in more than one place. I'll point out uh, three features that are beyond the scope of this introduction. Uh, Zotero will find duplicate items for you. It will find any unfiled items, that is things that you have not assigned to a collection, and it will allow you to share with others through the use of group libraries. Uh, it also has a feature where you can put in your own publications into a single uh, uh, collection. Going back to the formats, Zotero works really well for traditional text sources like book articles, books, conference papers, but it can also handle non-text materials, for example, films, recordings, TV, broadcasts, uh, podcasts, and artwork, and it can scrape text materials retrieved from the web, for example, actual web pages, blog posts, reports from think tanks. So if your research sources go beyond articles, books, and papers, Zotero will probably be your citation tool of choice. The way you reflect on the sources that you accumulate will also influence your choice of tools. Zotero allows you to have as many notes as you like attached to a um, source record. So in this case, we have a little arrow here that says we uh, that there's something else there. Uh, and in this case, we have five notes. The first line of, your, of a note becomes the title of the note. So with my notes, you click here and you can see this is using a heading for the paragraph. You can choose anything you like. You can use a variety of word processing tools, for example, italic, bold, uh, alignment. You can put in lists, numbered or bulleted, and you can put in different colors of, of fonts. So you have a pretty wide variety of uh, things that you can put there. And there's not a, a limit as far as I know as to how big these can be. I've copied entire book reviews into a note, so feel free to comment as much as you like and sort out your notes in any form that you like. So now that, um, another way that will um, help you choose whether to ch use ref or, or to use uh, Zotero or not is how you conduct your research. So Zotero works really well for people who download their references, whether a few at a time or many at a time, and then review and organize them later. So we've looked at a populated account, and we're going to go through the steps of setting up an account and adding references to it. There are three steps. These are spelled out on the Citation Tools Guide. Step one will be to install Zotero and its browser connectors. Step two will be to register your account. And step three will be to customize your account. So we'll go to the Zotero site. And this will take me one extra click. We'll go to Zotero. And this is where you start. So the first step is to actually download Zotero. Uh, it's going to be a two-part installation, Zotero itself and the browser connectors. So the first thing that you do is to download Zotero itself and install Zotero on each computer that you regularly use. So for example, my personal machine is a Mac and my office machine is a PC and I have Zotero on each one and it, for all intents and purposes that is a single account because it is syncing via the Zotero cloud. So I have Zotero on both of those. The download page senses what your operating system is and it presents you with the correct type. The, 
you do not have to install on all the, your computers at the same time. And the installation automatically includes a toolbar for Word. The second step of this two-part installation is to install a connector, a Zotero connector, for each browser that you use. There are four connectors, Chrome, Firefox, Safari, and Opera. So whether you're on a PC or a Mac, install the connectors for the browsers that you use. There is currently no connector for Internet Explorer. So once we have Zotero installed, I'll try not to make you seasick as we move up, uh, we're going to register the account. So to register the account, all you do is come up with a username, put in your email address, and fill out the rest of this very short form, and you will be establishing a password. The reason that you do that is to allow syncing among multiple computers, and then you will want to sync even if you generally only use one computer because the copy at the Zotero site in the cloud is your backup. So that means you automatically will always have a backup of your account. Once we've got this completely installed, then we will open up Zotero. And in your case, once you've opened this up, You would only have my library and you would have a couple of other um, folders on here that come in automatically. One being uh, the Zotero Guide, which is an online help, and then the ones about my publications. So what we're going to do at this point is to customize using preferences. On a Mac, it's Zotero Preferences. On a PC, it's Edit Preferences. We end up at the same place, and what we want to do is we'll pick first General, and there's some things you can do. So as you notice, you can change the font size on your account, and you can do other customization. We're going to concentrate on the sync. This is where you, in this case, it says unlink account. I'm not going to do that, but you can see that there's a username here. On your account, your brand new account, it would prompt you to enter a username and to enter a password. And then you're going to want to choose that you sync automatically. It's up to you if you want to sync full text content, and it's up to you if you want to sync attachment files. The, um, Attachment files, there is a limit on that. There's a 300 meg limit, which allows you to have about 100 PDFs. The next thing that we want to customize is advanced. And what we want to do is add in the ability to connect to Get It at VCU. On the Citation Tools Guide, you'll find this long address. And that is what you will enter into the resolver field. And then from ever after that, when you want to use Get It at VCU, you'll be able to from within your Zotero account. So now that we have a Zotero account, what we're going to do is to start adding sources to it. And Zotero works reasonably smoothly with our databases, as I mentioned before. It does quite well with non-traditional sources. The first step is to open up your Zotero account and then choose the collection or the sub-collection where you want these things to come to land. In this case, I'm doing demonstrations by database, so I have database names for the collections. Yours would obviously have completely different names. Could be a class, could be a project name, could be a topic. It's up to you. So for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to open up the Academic Search Complete collection. There's nothing in it. And then I'm going to go to Academic Search Complete and we'll do a search
opioid abuse, and we'll do the search. And for the purposes of this demonstration, I could choose specific uh, references that are here. In this case, I don't have time. I just bopped in to do something quickly and find some references that I want to look, in, look at later. So what I do is I choose share and I pick the first 10 and I can move through the pages and continue to do that and more and more references will go into the folder. This is true of all EBSCO databases. I, when I'm finished, I click on Folder View. I select all, there are all 10 of them, and I want them all to go into Zotero. I click Export, and I have an opportunity to choose Direct Export in RIS format, and it specifically mentions Zotero. So I choose that and say Save. Now, Zotero, and the first time that you do this, um, it will give you this little window, uh, import into Zotero, and I'll say yes, always allow for this site. Well, maybe I won't. Yes, I will. And then say okay. And as you can see, there's a little window here that says that it is importing. And now it has imported 10 items. So I come back to Zotero, and sure enough, I have the 10 items here in my Academic Search Complete folder. What you'll find when you look at any of these individual items is that not only do you get the type of item that it is, in this case a journal article, you get this regular citation information, but you also get the abstract, and for EBSCO, you also get the tags. Those are the subject terms that came in with and were assigned by Academic Search Complete to this particular reference. EBSCO also brings in a note, and this is just inf other information about the article, and you can keep that note, you can destroy it, you can do whatever you like with it. If you wanted to add your own tags, you just click Add, Type, Continue on until you've added as many tags as you like. So it's that simple. So that's how we get into something into um, Zotero using academic search complete. Remember I had mentioned that you could also use Get It at VCU inside of your Zotero account. So you just highlight whatever it is that you want. And because we had entered that address into the resolver field, we can now use library lookup, click, And there's Get It at VCU, and we can go straight to the article, and then you can download it as usual. So we'll close that out and come back, back excuse me, come back to Zotero. So that's how you get something through a database like EBSCO, where it's essentially a direct export. We're going to do another one out of a group of databases where it's a little bit different in how the actual export operates. So we'll do the same search. This, this will apply to any ProQuest database. And we'll type in the same. And I th think that it would be helpful if I spelled this correctly. Get a few more results. Okay, and we got a lot of results. In this particular instance, the way we can select many at a time is simply select all on the page. Up here, there's a folder, it says 20. If we move to the next page and selected the, another 20, that would obviously change to 40 and so on. When you're finished, click on Save. 
and we'll have to scroll a little bit, 2RIS. Select that and then scroll on this little form down to where it says continue. And what happened was it actually is prompting us to save this in downloads uh, as a particular file. So we'll just say yes, go ahead and save that. And now we'll come to Zotero. We're in ProQuest database collection and we'll say file, import, and we'll just go to downloads and there's the ProQuest file, select that, open it, and there they come in. Uh, there's been a question on open source. Open source simply means that anybody can work on the backside of Zotero. Um, there is a group at George Mason that monitors um, the operation of Zotero. And so if you're qualified to do programming on the back side, you can work with them and come up with new uh, extensions, new plugins, etc., and work generally on updating the software. So that's how it, uh, it, the, an import would work when you are in a database that doesn't do it directly, but actually creates a file. PsycInfo does much the same. And for PsycInfo, what we'll do is take a look at the process, and we won't go through the entire thing because actually saving the file or opening the file is the same. So in Psych Info, we've got a list of references here on the page. To select everything on the page, we'll just say all. And then for Psych Info, it's export, which is this little arrow icon. And then you have to actually choose the reference software that you want to use. And in this case, it would be Zotero, and then from that point on, the process is the same as what we saw with ProQuest. Another way of saving is to use uh, the actual connector that we had installed when we installed Zotero at the very beginning. We're in PubMed, we'll do a search. And if we look around, we don't see any way immediately of exporting. Uh, we could look at summary, you can look at send to, uh, it says something about a citation manager. I'll tell you, if you investigate that a little bit further, there are really no further details. So there's no mention here of Zotero or RIS. So what we're going to do for this one is to actually use the folder, which is a showing up in your browser. So we're in Chrome and there's a little folder here that is for Zotero, save to Zotero PubMed. In Safari, that little folder shows up towards the left. So it says, select what you wanna add. We wanna add all of them. And say, okay. And it's saving to ProQuest documents, which is a reminder to me that I'm in the wrong collection. So I'm gonna open up PubMed and then fly back to PubMed. And now we'll say select all. And actually, I think what I'll do is cancel that 
and do this again. And now I should be saving to PubMed. So we'll select all, OK. And it looks as though they should have all gone in. And here they are. We have 20 items and we have everything associated with that particular reference and the tags. Uh, in some case, this is a brand new one, so it does not have tags. Uh, the, those that do have mesh headings and tags will have those under the tags. So that's another way of getting things into uh, Zotero. The connector does work with EBSCO and with ProQuest, but you do not get the rich kinds of references that you get by using their export uh, capabilities. If you see something that refers to exporting in RIS or exporting to Zotero, use that instead of the connector. Otherwise, you'll get a skinny record, and that may be adequate for what you want to do, but if you're a deep dive researcher, you're going to want more information than what shows up on those records. I want to do a quick demonstration of finding things on the web. Oh, a question is that RefWorks is no longer recommended. Yes, we're doing away with our subscription to RefWorks as of the 30th of August, 2018. That's on our RefWorks guide. Um, and current RefWorks citations can be downloaded to either Zotero or Mendeley. We have instructions right now for getting them into Zotero, and we will shortly have them to get into uh, Mendeley. I'm going to open up the subcollection for RAND because what I want to do is go to a website. I'm going to see if I can close out some of these others and get to RAND. And when we get to this site, this is a research report that RAND Corporation has done. And we want to put this into Zotero. Up here, where it was, the little icon for Zotero was a folder, now it looks like a sheet of paper because there's just a single item on this page. And I'm in the RAND collection. So I'm going to say that I want to save to RAND. And it should be done. And I come over here. And sure enough, here it is. Now, there are a couple of things with this. Zotero thought it was saving a web page. And what we really have is an actual report. So what we're going to do is simply do a little editing here and change this from web page to report. And what will happen is that we now have a place to put the report number, the type of report that it is, the series title, the place where it was published, and the institution. And that you would have to manually enter, but it's very easy. You can do that at the time, or you can come back later. Uh, you've got the address, the URL, so you can just cl click there and go right straight back to the page and pick up the information. And on this page, by the way, there happens to be a citation. It happens to come up in Chicago style, but it will give you the place information and the uh, publisher, which is the Rand Corporation. So you can pick that up very easily. Another type of non-text item that Zotero can handle is a film. And I'm just trying to close out some of these extraneous um, tabs that we have here. Um, and we'll go to IMDB, to Hidden Figures. And again, the icon has changed. And the icon now indicates this is a film. And I'll have to remember that I want to be in IMDB for illustration purposes and come back to Chrome and say, yes, please put that in. 
and we'll wait a bit and should be there. And I'll get into Zotero and sure enough, and what we got here is quite a bit of information about that film. So it recognized that it was a film. We have the title, the director, other participants. We've got the three principal actresses, an abstract. We've got the genre, the running time, etc. And again, you can add as many tags as you like. There are some tags uh, that didn't, uh, there were some tags that it didn't pick up, uh, but you can add as many tags as you like. So that gives you an illustration of how uh, Zotero can operate with formats that are other than just the strict uh, articles and books. Um, I'll show you one quick glance at creating a bibliography. Uh, to create a bibliography, you can do that on the fly. All you have to do is accumulate your sources in a particular collection for your paper, write your paper, and then when you're ready to do your bibliography, simply right click on that collection and say create a bibliography from the collection. Tell it the style that you want to use. If you do not see the style that you are using listed here, simply click on Manage Styles and you'll be presented with a list and you can choose those. And then you'll choose Output Mode, Bibliography, and then, uh, let's see if we can, it's not gonna, I, below the fold here, but it is save um, as uh, word processing. And so we'll go over to Word, and what would happen is now I would just, I just copied it to the clipboard, and I just paste it into Word or into my Google Doc or whatever it happens to be. I am going to have to edit this because it's double spaced. There's no title that says references list, and I'm going to have to fix a proper name uh, that is not capitalized. But that's very easy to do because it's a word processing uh, document. The other way is remember when we installed Zotero, a toolbar came in automatically to Word. So we click on Zotero. And in this case, what we would be doing is we would be typing in the text. We get to the point where we need to add a, an in-text citation, and we simply click on Add Citation, choose it, from the Zotero collection, continue writing, go on to the next, add, for example, a quotation where you need a page number, you add the citation and the page number, and then once you're finished writing, you say that you want to add a bibliography. What's happened is this is code within the Word document, <clears throat> and what Zotero will do when we say add the bibliography, is it converts those actually to what we needed for our reference list. And so we've had to add, again, the heading for references list, and we formatted the paragraphs to remove the double spacing and to align with the left margin, capitalized rows, and, and again, their draft bibliographies. So at this point, uh, that's the introduction to Zotero, and I'm going to turn this over to Martha. A question on references I have on my laptop to Zotero uh, depends on what format they are. Probably you're going to have to go back into a database and or Google Scholar and enter the title of the items and bring them in that way. Otherwise, you have to manually type them in. So we've got another question here. Um, I'm going to add a little bit to the import from references from my laptop. If you mean do you have PDFs that are stored on your laptop, you can do it in Zotero, but you'd have to check each one over quite a bit. Um, I'll show you how to do that with Mendeley. Um, and then are there valid concerns over open source software in general? For example, 
Is it collecting data on users? Um, so open source software, the main reason I mentioned that is to indicate essentially how free Zotero is. So open source means that you can actually go in and like look at the back end code that's running it. So no, actually open source software um, is not usually a concern for privacy reasons. Um, as for the will it go away or will it not be supported later, that um, is a legitimate concern. But Zotero has been around for quite a while and I don't think there are um, very many concerns that it, the support will go away. But um, that, that does happen sometimes with open source software. But I'm, I'll mention it is supported by a, a center within the Department of Art History and History at George Mason University and it's been supported by that center for 12 years. So I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. Okay, so I'm going to move on to um, Mendeley, and I'm going to quit Zotero for the moment. Um, it's not going to want me to do that. It really I'm doesn't. <laughs> Here, let me see if I can get it to, it's, it's due to this, um, we have our resolution set really weird so that you guys can see everything, which has made Zotero, the Zotero window um, act a little bit strange. Um, <laughs> all right, so this is Mendeley, and the reason I, I'm okay, sorry, I'm reading a question. Um, we might have to get back to you about PDF stored, um, on your computer and uh, you'll see why from the Mendeley demonstration. Um, so part of the reason I closed Zotero was because you'll notice that they look a lot alike. Um, so it actually if you have both open it can be confusing <laughs> to get between them. Um, so Mendeley and Zotero actually have a lot of the same features. So in going over Mendeley I'm going to go over a few things that Marilyn already covered but I'm going to spend a little bit more time kind of trying to detail what's the same and what's different about Mendeley. So the look of the two is quite similar. Um, you have an all documents folder, um, you have a my publications, and then they actually use the term folder instead of collection for the folders, but similarly you can get in and you can create subfolders. Um, you can add them using this little button up at the top or you can just create them and drag and drop them around. Um, they also have um, a filter by tags similarly to what you saw in Zotero. Um, I want to mention the groups slightly more in Mendeley. Um, so you can create groups and invite and share things with people. And I mention this mostly for Mendeley because it's um, one of Mendeley's strong points is how easy it is to share things with other people you're working on, including the notes, the PDFs, and um, essentially everything related to the record is very easy to share. Um, if you are looking at a document, um, you can get a manual edit that looks remarkably similar to what you had in Zotero. Um, a few things that are a little different. These stars over here on the side allow you to make something a favorite and it will appear in your favorites folder. Um, the little green dots um, are actually to indicate whether or not you have read an item or not. And it's kind of strange, so you can mark them as read or mark them as unread. And you would think that that would add those things to the recently read folder, but it actually doesn't. The recently read folder is um, uh, things that you have opened recently. So that overview of high voltage SIC power is now in the recently read. It might have been there before. <laughs> um, but that's essentially what that folder does for you. Um, Another thing that's a little bit different about Mendeley and Zotero is that Mendeley is not very customizable. So I cannot increase the font size in Mendeley. This is it. I can't make it any bigger. I can't move this thing over any. I can get rid of it altogether, but I can't make it smaller. Um, I cannot change these columns here, this author title, year, published, added, and that's what's there, and I cannot affect that. I cannot um, adjust those. Um, so Zotero generally is a little bit more customizable. Um, so when you want to start using Mendeley, it actually works very similarly to Zotero. So I'm going to go to the browser and go to the main Mendeley website. Um, so again, you're going to need to download this onto your computer or any computers that you regularly use. 
Um, and again, it's going to um, kind of detect which system you're using. And then there are options here for downloading the web importer, which is what Mendeley calls the connector, and the citation plugin for Word. I'll show you how to do this from Mendeley as well. Um, so they're already installed, but so it's a very similar um, installation process. Um, you'll, then you'll need to create a free account. And this is um, actually where we get into one of the biggest differences between Mendeley and Zotero. So I can go in and I can create an account, and creating an account's easy, just like it was in Zotero, but you'll notice it mentioned a free account. So that means that there are not free accounts as well. And it's a little bit hard to quite figure out um, what you get with a free account, what you get with a pro account, um, but generally Mendeley is um, owned by the publisher Elsevier. So they offer some services for free and then there are premium and pro plans that you can get. Um, so the default is to create a free account and if you're trying to figure out what you get with that free account, you have to just scroll all the way down here to the very bottom, go to support, and then orders and renewals. And what do I get with a free Mendeley account? So with your free Mendeley account, you get two gigabytes personal storage for personal documents, which is a lot. Um, and that's very nice. So that's a little bit more than you get with Zotero. Um, however, Mendeley doesn't make it quite as easy as Zotero to not store the personal documents on their cloud library. Um, so you get five private groups with up to 25 collaborators but you only get 100 megabytes of shared web storage across all groups. So that's kind of where they're trying to get you to upgrade to the premium accounts. So you can upgrade your account. Um, so they give you information on how to do this and somewhere there should be a premium packages page. So this tells you kind of essentially the plus, the pro, the max. So there is a cost here if you need one of these. Generally, if you're a graduate student or an undergraduate student, the free plan is fine. They say this one's great for students, but I don't think that you're going to need more than what's in, available in that free plan. For faculty, you run into the shared storage space, particularly if you're going to be sharing documents or references with your grad students. Um, VCU Libraries has a limited number of um, free premium accounts available for faculty, so you can get in touch with somebody at the library if you are interested in one of those. But again, for students, the free plan should be good. Um, although I will say that it won't necessarily, this has changed in the last year, I think at least once. So there is that concern since it is um, owned by a company. Um, so once you create your free account, you can sign in and I'll sign into my account. And so essentially it works the same way that Zotero did. You have your local library in the Mendeley um, installation on your computer, and then you have the library on the cloud. So all my folders and stuff are here as well. I, it's giving me a welcome to Mendeley. Can I get rid of this? <laughs> oh, that's fun, a nice bug. So um, if, Anyway, if their Welcome to Mendeley thing would go away, um, you would be able to see my library behind there on the cloud. Um, so that's how the sync works, and that's how essentially you keep things updated between all your devices. Mendeley also has mobile applications if you tend to use um, something like an iPad. Um, I wanted to mention that in the Tools folder of the download version, you can install the web importer and install, or in this case, uninstall the MS Word plugin. So um, you can, from the downloaded installation, actually get those other tools quite easily. Um, so that's one of the big differences with Mendeley. I'm going to go on to how to import things in. Um, so one thing that's really nice, so a lot of this works the same way. So Mendeley's instructions, or Maryland's instructions on how to import from EBSCO and ProQuest are going to work essentially the same. Anytime you see the ability to export to an RIS file, Mendeley can read those as well. Um, so this is one of the RIS files that Marilyn already downloaded. I can actually just drag and drop it into my Mendeley account and it picks up those same, same things. So it works a little bit differently than it did in Zotero, but it's largely the same. So for those databases where you can download that RIS file, um, this is gonna work the same. If I open this detail back up, 
I get the abstracts. The title is in the same sort of information that Marilyn got in Zotero. One of the um, differences, though, is going to be when I try and use the importer. So if I go to PubMed and try and use the importer, so Mendeley's importer as a rule works OK, but generally not quite as well as Zotero's. Um, so I've got Mendeley on the mind. Apparently, I keep saying that and typing it. So if I search for fruit flies in PubMed, um, so PubMed has the kind of same issue that Marilyn described where it's hard to figure out how to export to that RS file and I don't think it's even possible. Um, but if I am looking for fruit fly kind of articles and I click the Mendeley importer, So you'll notice I get the reduced drosophilia, the electric synapses. So it looks like it's doing pretty well. Let's see how it does all the way at the bottom. Okay, so that's not the bottom one. Pavement cells, so where did that come from? <laughs> um, so this is the problem. It's getting things, it might be getting recommended things from elsewhere on the page. It might have things in slightly the wrong order. It's a little bit harder to batch import anything with Mendeley's importer. So you might not want to do that. It's just gonna be a little bit trickier to make sure that you know exactly what you're actually importing. Um, so one thing to do would be to go in and actually look at one of these. So from a single individual page, it's gonna be a little bit better. So I click the Mendeley importer and then it found the journal article and that's pretty easy. So, so it, and then it's going to try and download the PDFs if they're available. And there is a link up here to the full text PDF, but I'm gonna make a guess that Mendeley is not gonna manage to grab it. Okay, so let's see, it got just the reference. So the reference is over here now in my Mendeley account. I'm probably gonna have to sync. So Mendeley syncs automatically every time you open, close, or periodically. Um, the, the syncing issue is generally actually only when you're trying to demonstrate it and you're going kind of back and forth more quickly than you normally would. So it might have put it in my all documents. Oh, that's fun. Did it not take you? Oh, I know what it is. So it is probably in here, but it's time is not sensitive enough for me to it's mixed in with all those other ones. So it didn't do as good a job of actually sorting that into the folder correctly. But it is here. It's this Drosophilia one that I think I just got in. So it pulled it in. It gave me a pretty decent record. It's asking me to verify if the results are correct. But you notice it didn't pull in the PDF automatically, even though it claimed it was going to try and do that. Um, if you go to the page um, on which you can oftentimes download the PDF, like there's the actual like full text PDF, download PDF button, uh, oftentimes Mendeley will grab the PDF for you automatically. So we'll see if it'll work. Yeah, so it got both the PDF and the reference this time. So that's kind of nice. It'll actually try and pick up that PDF for you so that you just have one step. Um, but what if I am not using PubMed? So it worked fairly well with PubMed, which is nice. A lot of people use PubMed. So this is a database I use pretty regularly in my work, is IEEE. Um, so if I do a search here, and try the Mendeley importer. So I've got, a good amount of results here. It thinks I'm on a web page. It does not pick up the fact that this is a results list at all. Um, so this essentially is not going to work. I'd have to download that RIS file. Um, if I go to one of these papers, <laughs> I can try again. A little slow. 
So it pulled it up. It did better this time now that I'm on one page. So in general, Zotero works a little bit better if you're going to ever try and batch import articles. Mendeley does do a little bit better. But you notice it didn't get a very, if I click edit here, it got the title, the authors. It's not pulling in the abstract. It's getting most of the information, but it's not really getting any extra. It's a pretty trim record. So I could save that. But the other thing that I can do, and this is where Mendeley really excels, if you regularly download PDFs and collect PDFs, um, Mendeley is usually very good. And that should download. Okay. Where is it downloading? Oh, there we go. So if I actually download this to my computer, just goes into my downloads folder. I can go to Mendeley and just pull it over. And then I actually get um, the full record. So I get journal article, the title, the authors, journal the abstract, I get a citation key, I get author keywords. So this actually works really well. Conveniently, I can actually do this with whole batches of PDFs. So I have a folder here that just has some random PDFs in it. And I can pull that over as well. And it takes a little bit of time, but essentially I can get all these documents over here as well. So Mendeley, if you tend to download PDFs, it works very well. Depends on the, essentially the metadata that's included with the PDF, how rich the record will be, but you can go in and add things. This is a conference paper, so it doesn't actually have um, a, volume and issue and I could change this to say conference proceeding. So it works really well with PDFs. Um, I've got a question about Mendeley not being open source. Mendeley is definitely not open source. So it's proprietary and owned by Elsevier. So another thing that Mendeley can do, which is kind of fun, is if I create a folder on my desktop and just call it something, I can actually tell Mendeley to watch that folder. So if I go to add a watched folder, I can select any folder, essentially anywhere in my um, computer's file system, and say, okay, I'm gonna go to all documents and sort this. So, and then I'm gonna go back to IEEE and get a different paper. So if I download this PDF, instead of downloading it to my downloads, if I download it to that folder that I just um, told Mendeley to watch, this will actually automatically add it to Mendeley. So there it is, the undersampling imbalance learning on data gravitation. Um, So someone says it seems less robust than Zotero. It kind of depends on what you're doing, actually. So both of them are pretty robust. I'd say the main thing that is a little bit lacking in Mendeley compared to Zotero is actually going to be um, its web importer, which doesn't work as well. The general organizational feature and some other things that I'll show you in Mendeley work a little bit better. So it depends, on, again, on what you do. Um, they Both of them do upgrade periodically. So Elsevier has a good amount of money. They tend to have a cleaner interface, which is a little easier to use than Zotero. Zotero, um, it's up to the people uh, who are developing it as to what features. So there's, um, it's a little bit more organic <laughs> as to what features get added. Um, so it mostly depends actually on what you're looking to do. Um, so that's importing things into Mendeley generally. Um, I'm going to very quickly go over one thing that's really nice in Mendeley. So Mendeley has better, um, in, in my opinion, note-taking capabilities if you like to take notes on the PDF itself. So I can actually open up um, these papers that I have, and I can take notes right here in Mendeley. Um, I can highlight the PDF. Yeah. 
I can go down and highlight specific sections. I can add a note to a specific um, kind of like a sticky note like you can in Word or in um, Google Docs. And these are actually shared. So these are shared on the cloud. And if you're working in a group library, these are shared with all the people you're collaborating with. So I might be yellow and somebody else that I'm working with is purple. Um, so you can keep track of essentially who is doing things and who is making the notes. So if you actually want to work with the PDFs for notes, um, this is an excellent way to collaborate and take notes together. Um, so this is a difference that um, Sotero does not allow for this as easily. Um, so that is one really nice thing with Mendeley. Um, Mendeley also has, so it does have the needs review, which is kind of nice. And it'll check for duplicates just like Sotero. So most of those features work exactly the same. Um, I do want to go into Word really fast. We're running out of time. Um, but Mendeley also has um, a plugin with Word. Um, so I'm actually going to open a new document. So um, if I'm in Word and I want to add in a citation, so there's a few things I can do. I can copy the citation from Mendeley. So I could go to um, one of these and I can copy as a formatted citation. This is going to depend on the citation style that I have selected here. And you can get more styles. I have APA selected. So I could select this and copy as a formatted citation. And I could add that as a bibliography. And it's going to paste it incorrectly. Um, so that's one nice thing you can do, but you can use their plugin as well. So if I want to add an in-text, in, in this case, it comes in in references. So there's these Mendeley kind of icon tools. So I can insert a citation. So I can insert the citation for that. And it adds in the correct APA citation. And then when I insert the bibliography, like Zotero, um, it gets the correct thing. One nice thing is, say I want to go add a second one. I add in more information, and now this particular thing it needs two citations. I can add in another citation. It adds the second reference down here automatically. But you'll notice I've got the two parentheses, which I don't really want. I want these all grouped together. So I can actually merge citations. And this is the only thing that's really different from Zotero. Zotero will do all the rest of this, but it won't merge citations. You have to go in and manually edit them in Zotero. So that's kind of nice. I can merge them together. And then actually, I can actually change the style. So I don't, I tend to use something like I could believe, and I can change and I get the numbers. So that makes it really easy. Again, as Marilyn mentioned, these are um, draft citations. You're going to want to go and check. I think we're essentially running out of time. So that's it, that's a quick overview. Um, hopefully this has helped you choose. I know we do have a question here about being on the fence. Um, Marilyn and I are going to stay around for a little bit. Um, so please ask questions. Um, so we've got a question saying, oh yes, and we had one thing we wanted to mention we'll go back to real fast, um, is that this is the guide for that citation tools um, webinar where you'll find more information on these tools um, and um, that we will put this recording up um, as soon as we have it ready. Um, so I'm going to go through some of these questions. So we've got um, comfortable sharing a recommendation on the fence. Um, so will personal tutorings or recordings be available later? Um, so the citation tools website has more information on each one. Um, yes, we're happy to give recommendations based on specific needs. And, and usually the best thing to do is you can email either one of us um, or meet. But the, the main thing is the, essentially what is your method of research? So, um, and then what kind of resources do you use? So there's a few things that are, I guess, fairly obvious. If you tend to use, you'll notice that when I demonstrated Mendeley, 
I only did PDF like articles and conference papers. Mendeley really does not work very well if you use unusual sources. So if you use artworks, films, a lot of kind of blogs and websites and things like that, you probably want to consider Zotero pretty strongly. Um, again, Zotero handles that batch um, importing of citations better and then the looking up the source later. So if that tends to be your workflow where you regularly um, collect a lot of citations and then do the deeper dive at a later time, you also might want to consider Zotero. What Mendeley really handles very well is dealing with the PDFs themselves. So if your research process is that you regularly do that deep dive as you're doing your research, you regularly go and try and download the full text PDF while you're researching, Mendeley can handle that really well and really pretty seamlessly. You can just drag and drop them over and get the citations that way, and then you can actually work with that PDF inside Mendeley. So that would be probably one of the main use cases for using Mendeley. And again, Mendeley has some really excellent collaboration tools. Um, Zotero does that pretty well. So that's, a, that's kind of more of a preference, which one you, which collaboration tool you like better. And again, they do both have free accounts, so there's no reason why you can't try them both. That's right. Um, so you will be getting an email with, um, one, a link for a survey, <coughs> excuse me, um, and a link to a guide which will essentially, um, it's the um, general guide for the Advance Your Research webinars and workshops. It will have the recording for this, information for contact, and um, this URL for citation tools um, where you can find contact information for people that can help you more. Thank you for attending. Are there any other questions? So we got a question about Mendeley being free to download. So yes, Mendeley, the free version is for you to download. Like I said, if you need any of those premium features, that's where they um, start to charge you. Um, so if you have any other questions, um, the main contact information on the citation tools guide is Marilyn, and she, I think, is probably the best first contact. If she does not know your, um, the answer to your question, um, she will forward it on to someone else. Um, also, if you direct any of these main questions to the library through the library at and the Ask Us page of the library, um, they will get forwarded on to the correct person. So if you're at um, the Tompkins McCaw Medical Library, we have experts over there who can help you as well. So um, don't be afraid to ask some of these questions to any of our general contact um, methods on the main library's homepage. Are there any other questions? All right, I don't see any other, um, oh, so we do have a questions, instructions for EndNote. Um, so if you go to the citation tool guide, there is some information on EndNote. Um, most of our EndNote experts are over at the Tompkins McCall Library. That tends to be more heavily used on the medical campus. Um, but we do have librarians who know how to use EndNote and can help you with EndNote as well. Um, we didn't cover it today, um, really only because it's not free, um, <laughs> which is a barrier for many people. Um, but if you need help with EndNote or are considering EndNote, yes, there's information on the Citation Tools Guide, and we do have people who can help you with that.
Uh, looks like we still have a few attendees. Are there any additional questions? Um, all right, I think that's the end of the questions. Um, there's still a few attendees, but I think I'm going to um, close out and end the webinar. Thank you all so much for coming, and please let us know um, later if you have any additional questions. <laughs>